solutions and their characteristics. So we as scientists like to divide things into different categories. We can take matter as this is chemistry and we can divide it into two particular groups. Um, one of those being pure substances. And so under pure substances, we can further divide that. That's what I like to do in science into elements, things you can find on the periodic table or compounds, which would be combinations of those things you find on your periodic table. So that would be pure substances. The second group that we can then classify matter into, pure substances, and then we have mixtures, the impure substances. The two types that we can then further divide that group into would be homogeneous mixtures and hydrogenous mixtures, or homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. We're going to be focusing on homogeneous mixtures, particularly solutions. So pure substances themselves just to clarify, we can have things that are pure substances that are an element, and they are themselves just an atom. For example, the noble gases are atoms that are also elements. Then we have some elements that are molecules themselves. They don't exist as single atoms, but instead they form groups of atoms, but only groups of that same atom, for example, O2, or N2 or S8. Um, it is a group of all of the same atoms, so it is still a molecule. Sorry, it is still an element, um, but it is a molecule because there's not just one of those same atoms. And then, of course, a compound would involve molecules, it could involve molecules, where you have different types of atoms grouped together. Um, and since you have more than one type of atom, it classifies as a compound. Since they are grouped together, it is a molecule. It's not the only type of compound, uh, but it is a type of compound. Then if you were to try to make a compound out of only an atom, that's not going to work. So pure substances themselves, they can exist as compounds or as elements. And we can see that we have different types of these elements here. Um, just that no compounds are themselves atoms. So mixtures themselves, that non-pure substance side of, of um, matter, uh, we can have suspensions as essentially suspensions are mixtures where you can see the particles. So if you have like dirty water, you can see the little bits of water in there. Um, that would be a suspension. If you drink regular orange juice that actually still has pulp in it, um, you can see the bits of pulp in there and that would be a suspension. If you left it for a long time, it may actually settle out and, and the, the pieces may separate from the rest of it. Um, so this is referred to as heterogeneous. You can see the different parts to it. Then there are these things called colloids. So these are essentially, they are heterogeneous, but they look homogeneous. You can't see the different parts to them, but they are there. And one of the things that lets you know that they're there is that these tend to be opaque. So if you have something like milk or paint, um, if you were to look at it with your eye, you'd say, okay, that looks, that looks homogeneous. But in fact, if you looked at it with actually a microscope or something slightly better than your eye, um, you would actually see that there are small little pieces in there, like little globs of fat if it's milk, um, or little pigment molecules if it is paint. Um, and so these do look homogeneous, but are in fact heterogeneous. So they are referred to as colloids. And the one that we are going to be talking about are solutions. And so this is essentially, if you have those little pieces so small that you could not even see them with a microscope, um, they are down to the actual uh, molecular level, um, then you have a solution. So the particles, whether they are molecules that make up the particles, or they are atoms that make up the particles, or they are ions that make up the particles, they are mixed in with another substance. And so it is a mixture, um, but it's referred to as a solution because the particles themselves, they're not the size of a, a, a glob of fat or a grain of sand. They're much, much, much smaller, and you cannot see them with your eye. So these would be referred to as actually being homogeneous. So something like salt in water, um, you could look at a microscope and, and look at salt in water, and you will not be able to see the actual pieces of salt. And by pieces, I mean the ions of salt. Um, same thing with air. If you were to look at air with a microscope, you can't actually see um, the nitrogen versus the oxygen. Um, and so these are considered solutions. So quick comparison between the two, pure substances always have fixed proportions. So they have a, you, you could write down their actual chemical formula. That's what's going to define them as a pure substance. Solutions, however, have various compositions. And so when you go to buy rubbing alcohol from 
the drugstore, you might be able to get it at 30% or 70% or 100% um, because their compositions vary. And so you don't have a formula for a solution. You don't have a chemical formula. You, you can have a chemical formula for the parts of it, but not for the overall solution because the composition can vary. What they do have in common is they both look the same. If you had a, a jug of water or a jug of rubbing alcohol, it would, they would both be homogenous and you cannot see the parts that's in them. Um, but with water, it's all, every single piece is the same piece. With a solution, there's going to be at least two pieces and you, you can't tell them apart by looking at them. So these two components that make up solutions, the one of them is called the solvent, and this is present in a larger quantity. It is the thing that dissolves the other component, and the other component being the solute. Um, so for example, if you like instant coffee, um, you can dissolve um, that solute into water, which would be the solvent, and it, I would imagine that you'd have more water than you would have of this, whatever they make it, coffee powder stuff, um, and, and therefore the solvent is the water in this case, and almost all the stuff we're going to be looking at is going to use water as the solvent, and the solute is the stuff that is actually being dissolved into the water to make the solution. And as long as it is actually um, mixed to the point where you cannot see the eventual pieces, then it would be referred to as a solution. This then gives you the option of changing the concentration of the solution because it is variable in its um, proportions. The ratio of how much solute you have to how much solvent you have could be changed. So for example, you could have a concentrated solution where you have lots of solute. So if you look at like syrup, um, it has lots of sugar dissolved in some amount of water. Hopefully there's still more water than sugar. Um, and if so, then, then the sugar is the solute and the water is the solvent. Um, realize you could get to the point where you might be able to go past that. Um, but if you have lots of solute, then you would have a concentrated solution. Um, when sap, if it actually is maple syrup, um, when sap comes out of the tree, it would have very little sugar in it. And so it would be referred to as a dilute solution. Um, there's not as much solute and there's a fair amount of solvent. And of course you could have more solute and less solvent. Um, and therefore you, you could make it more concentrated. So this would be more concentrated and this would be more dilute over here. This gives us um, the idea of what a solution is. And those examples all involve using a, a solid and a liquid, but a solution itself could have different phases. So they're going to go over some nine examples here. Some are a little bit more obvious than others, um, but there are different types of solutions. So for example, it, it does not have to be a liquid and a liquid. You can dissolve a solid within another solid. Um, you probably will have to melt them first. So at the point when you do it, you'd have to do it as a liquid, um, but then they would solidify and then they would still be a, a actual solution. So if you look at steel, um, it is iron with other things dissolved in it. And of course you'd have to melt it to get them to dissolve properly, um, but you can actually dissolve them and then, then they become a solid. And so this is actually a solution. There is a little bit of other things in there mixed in and you can't see one part being different from the other part. They're, they're uniformly uh, mixed in there. You could change the composition of it so you can make different types of steel with this um, uh, very amounts of iron and carbon. And therefore, this is a solution. It's a solid, solid solution once it has solidified. Um, solid in a, in a liquid, we talked about that already. Um, solids, you can actually have little pieces of solid um, floating around in the air. So for example, things like air fresheners and mothballs and that sort of thing, um, the little bits of these things come off and go into the air. This is why you can smell them. Um, and so technically that's a solid that is dissolved in a gas. You can't actually see the little pieces. So it is a homogeneous mixture, but they are little pieces of solid. Liquid dissolved in a solid, um, you can actually uh, take wax and actually dissolve mineral oil into it to make it um, softer and more pliable. And so you have a liquid that actually is going to dissolve into a solid. Um, liquid into a liquid, we, we looked at that a little bit with rubbing alcohol, but things like antifreeze where you have two liquid components that mix together, that's going to be a liquid liquid solution. Um, a liquid dissolved in a gas, um, they're using the example here for high, uh, humidity. And that's not quite right because actually water is probably going to be at this gas stage at that point. Um, but if you, if you did have a bunch of them together actually forming a liquid, because to be a liquid you actually have a group of molecules, then that may be an example of a liquid dissolved into a gas. Um, a gas dissolved into a solid though, you could have um, things like, I don't know, 
even like pop rocks, you'd have uh, carbon, uh, carbon dissolved into sugar, or, or you could actually have that in ice. When they do ice cores, they can get the gas out of the actual ice itself and see what the atmosphere was like back when that ice was laid down. Um, gas dissolved in liquid. If you ever had a carbonated drink, there's the CO2 gas in there. And of course, um, the stuff that the fish is breathing, fish are breathing out of water, that's going to be the oxygen dissolved in water. So gases are going to be easily able to dissolve into a liquid. And then a gas-gas mixture, this would be the example that we saw as the atmosphere. And so things like carbon dioxide in our current atmosphere, methane going into our atmosphere, um, all of that would be one gas dissolving into another gas. Therefore, it would also be a solution.